right, welcome back to the Novel Tea Podcast. My name is Alexandra. And I'm Emily. And I read from the perspective of your classic, horrible, nerdy <laughs> English teacher who probably annoyed the heck out of you, kind of thinking about, as a reader, what do I owe the book? And I read more from the perspective of a writer and from an editor, so I say I read it more from what the writer owes their reader. Yeah. Because you do owe them something. And we always have tea, so what are we drinking today, Emily? Today we are both drinking uh, Twining's Murder on the Orient Express. It's fantastic. Oh, oh wait, is this Harney and Sons or Twining's? Oh, you're right, it's Harney and Sons. Hello. Yeah. I'm yeah. having a having morning. <laughs> yeah. And it's really good. It's very, yeah, it's very, it's much more of a strong black tea with a little bit of gunpowder in it. Mm -hmm. I like it. I'm having mine with a dollop of milk and honey. I'm just honey. I'm yeah, just straight, straight honey. I learned to just drink with honey when I was working in an office because I like don't want to... Well, if you bring milk into an office, people steal it. So yeah. I'm just like, no, I'm going to have yeah. my honey. It's going to hide at my desk. Yeah. And then we'll just learn to sing to that. Yes. Do, ah, drink tea that way. Well, and to be fair, you had a contentious workplace when it came to, you know, water and the fridge and all the of those sorts of things. The amount of people who would steal food and be aggressive about it... <laughs> I, I actually had a coworker like go and write his name on my food once, and I'm just like, dude, like <laughs> I know that's mine. You can't just claim it. <laughs> that's pretty amazing. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. So, honey with tea. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so for today, since this is our January episode, we're going to be talking about our reading goals for 2024 why we have them, the philosophy behind them, what worked well in 2023, what we're leaving behind. What we're doing for 2024 to make yeah. this even better. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about like why you feel reading goals are important to you. Well, for me, okay, so reading goals obviously help you read consistently. Mm -hmm. And um, I think like a lot of people are just kind of like, well, why does that matter? It matters a lot to me for a couple of different reasons. First of all, reading is kind of like my calm down space and mm -hmm. my you know, where I go when I just need to okay. calm down and be happy. So like, that's a lot of why I consume books. But also, I find books are a huge part of my relationships. My closest friends, obviously. <laughs> like, reading is so central to our relationships. I've met and make, made new friends through consistent reading and just having a lot of books to talk about. Mm -hmm. My husband and I refer to our relationship as an eight year long conversation about books and movies. Like, it's just a huge part of, you know, how I communicate with people. And honestly, the best relationships I have are the ones where I can be like, so what are you reading right now? Mm -hmm. You know, the people who don't read, it's kind of like, what What do we talk about? Right. <laughs> and there usually isn't a lot to talk about. You know, yeah. books really open you up to like a new world of people. Mm -hmm. It's a great way to connect with people. So yeah, the more I read, the more yeah. fun I have personally, the more space I have to calm down, but also just the more people I can talk to. Yeah. I feel like, you know, reading is an intrinsic interest for me. It's part of my personality. I never go very long without reading. I don't have goals necessarily to remain disciplined. I'm actually a very undisciplined person. And I have learned this over the years that I really have to have intrinsic motivation and an intrinsic desire to do the things that I have in my life. Like I really have to dig deep and find that. Otherwise it ain't happening because <laughs> I really, I'm not a disciplined person. I have a really hard time quote unquote, forcing myself to do things or, you know, to be, to like, I don't, I don't even know what you would call it. That's how undisciplined I am. I don't really know what's going on in other people's heads when they well, do I things they it, don't really want to. I think it is important that when you talk about like goals, they're just personal goals. Yeah. This isn't really about have to, yeah. because I agree. Like anytime you say have to, man, that suddenly becomes far more difficult than it ever needed mm -hmm. to be. Yeah. And so, you know, I think Reading goals for me are more about kind of like assessing how I can maximize my enjoyment of reading really is what it comes down to is like, oh, because the thing that's always going to trip me up in my reading and make me be more inconsistent is if I hit like kind of a reading slump mm -hmm. and I hit a reading slump if I try to force myself to read something that I'm just not that into. So I have to be very intuitive with it. I feel like. Yeah. And also for me having reading goals, because a lot of times my reading goals are about like, you know, books that I really want to read and there are a million, right? Yeah. Because that's what life as a reader is like, 100%. <laughs> always books I want to read. Yeah. Like being able to like have those accessible to me so that when I'm like, oh, I'm going to go on a walk. What should I read? And I need to like pull up something out. Well, I just already have a list. I can go mm -hmm. to, I can pick something and I can keep going. Yeah. You know, rather than being like, oh shoot, what was, 
what were those books we were talking about? You know? Yeah. yeah. And I think, you know, one of the things that I, I, I like reading, but I like it. I like it about myself that I am a reader for many of the reasons that you were saying. I think, you know, talking with other people who are readers, having conversations about the ideas that books bring up makes you a more interesting person, makes conversations really interesting. Yeah. I'm curious about the world. I'm curious about the way that books affect me and inform me. And I'm, I'm curious about the way that I respond to books even. Um, yeah. And, I mean, it's a great way to open yourself up to the world more. Mm -hmm. Um, cause there's certainly a lot of things, especially like if you don't live in a huge metropolis area mm -hmm. that you can't really experience mm -hmm. and books allow you to have those experiences, to learn things, to know things that you're not going to figure out just mm -hmm. going to the grocery store once yeah. a week, you know? Yeah. And I think, you know, for me, books are both entertaining and edifying and it's like, I watch so much TikTok and YouTube content and I watch my fair share of trash TV and like, <laughs> you know, and that, and I don't begrudge myself that at all because we all need rest time and downtime, downtime. and yes. relaxing time and that sort of thing. But I do feel like good about myself when I read as well. It's something that's good for my self-esteem and I enjoy doing, but enjoy doing it. But I also like, am proud of myself for doing it. I feel good about it. Yeah. I mean, I think that there is something like intrinsically about reading that's like an accomplishment in and of itself mm -hmm. like it's something that's worth doing mm -hmm. and so when you've done it and you know you've read a new book you've discovered a new author you've learned something new because you've read something about history all of those things do kind of bolster you like mm -hmm. it feels like i put my time into something worthy mm -hmm. you know and again there's nothing wrong with being like i need to zone out on tiktok dog videos tonight absolutely nothing wrong but there is something far more satisfying mm -hmm. Uh, if you make it like through a book on that night instead, you know, yeah. I, I thoroughly agree. That is like a nice warm feeling inside. Yeah. So what were some of the reading? Oh, how did some of your like goals support the ways that like you can fulfill the ways in which reading is important to you? Well, a large part of like my reading goals center around like specific books that I'm like, okay, I want to do this this year. And so like that leads to me like just knowing like, okay, this is, you know, what I have coming up next. I also like center a lot of my goals around diversifying my reading. Mm -hmm. And so that I feel like helps me keep more interest in reading and mm -hmm. keeps me going. If I was just there was a time in my life where, you know, reading just like one type of genre and you do like burn out on that and you mm -hmm. don't read as much. And I, I truly have read, been consistently reading far more, making it a consistent goal to diversify my reading. Yeah. Yeah. We touched on that a little bit in last month's episode and that's definitely been a goal for, of mine as well. And I think, you know, being an English major and someone who just naturally likes classics, I've read a lot of classics before I even went into my college degree. Like if you, you show me like top 100 classics that you should read, there's a good chance that I've read like 75 of them or something like, like <laughs> yeah. I, I've read, a, you know, I've kind of read deeply in the realm of classics and I did find myself getting burnt out. And so it was time for me to expand my horizons and say, okay, this is always going to be home base for me. I'm right. never not going to love. We classics. all have comfort zones. Mm -hmm. We all have places that we, we go, I mean, it got cold here finally. And so now I'm reading mysteries because yeah. there's something that like just triggers me. Like it's cold. I need to like read about, you know, a body and six suspects in London in the winter. I yeah. don't know. There are places that like are absolutely comfort zones. This is yeah. where I go for this particular time. And that's also totally okay. Yeah. Because sometimes you need that home base to like launch you to the next yeah. round. Totally. And I, and it's just definitely been something where I'm like, okay, I want to hear a different type of voice yeah. in my reading. I would say that's probably the number one thing that I was looking for is like, you know, classics obviously range a wide variety of time periods, a wide variety of cultures, especially with my interest in, you know, uh, different, uh, my classical studies and medieval literature and that sort of thing. Although I will admit I read primarily like British and American literature, but you get like the Russians yeah. in there and like, I'll, you know, anyway, uh, I don't need to go into that. <laughs> you know, there is a sense of like, I want to hear maybe about these same ideas, but from a totally fresh perspective, or, or maybe some brand new ideas that really haven't been at the heart of the conversation of what we talk about when we talk about the canon. Right. So one way to think about the canon is like what books, books are in conversation with each other throughout Western 
civilization, which is an interesting place to start. But like, those aren't the only questions that humans have come up with. Absolutely. And I, and I think it's worthwhile taking a lens to your own culture and to the foundations of your own culture. But boy, is it also extremely helpful to take a fresh person's perspective because you know, you don't know the blind spots that you have and the biases that you have until you start getting some of those other voices coming in to share their perspective on the world. And it's not just like different experiences. Um, I find when I step outside of Western uh, literature in essence, it's like entirely new ways of thinking about things and approaching stuff, which is very refreshing. Mm -hmm. It makes again, reading more interesting to like delve into something completely different. And yes, it might be a different experience or it might be a similar experience, but just a completely different approach mm -hmm. to understanding it. Yeah. Excellent. I love it. So what were some of the goals that you had for 2023? We're filming this in 2023. So we have a few more weeks to hit some of these things. How successful are you? How long track I will you? not be reaching my goals for 2023. Uh, this is the first year I put like a number uh, on mm -hmm. my um, reading goals. Yeah. And actually to go back to like, there was a time when I just was like reading and I didn't pay attention at all. Mm -hmm. And about like, I think about four years ago, I thought like, oh, I should start like writing down what I read. So like, I remember what I read this year. And it literally just started with me, like with my notes app, just pulling mm -hmm. it out. Uh, and one thing I realized was just doing that mm -hmm. actually encouraged me to read more because it's a very satisfying, like, oh, I finished this and look, that's number 20. Oh, that's number 30. You know, like it yeah. kind of feeds into like, this is really encouraging. Right. So I got to the point where I was like reading like 50 to 55 books a year. And I was like, yeah. Um, and then in 2022, I read 95 books, which that's a what, fantastic yeah, it number. It was like, yeah. So this year I'm like, okay, I'm going to read 100, yeah. you know, uh, primarily the big change was the type of work I did last year compared to this year did not require me to like pay that much attention. So I could read Listen through to a lot of audio yeah. books while you're doing work. Exactly. And this year I've had to have like much more customer interaction. So not easy. And so I realized that putting like a number value on it mm -hmm. to, to be like give an update. I'm on 60 books for this yeah. year and we've got like what, four weeks left, three weeks yeah. left. So I'm not making it to hundred. Yeah. <laughs> not happening. I'll, I'll try to make it to 70, but yeah. I won't make it to hundred. Yeah. But I did realize like, it's not as good for me to do a number mm -hmm. because that number is also often like affected by what happens during that year. Right. And sometimes I can't, you know, judge yeah. when this year, this is what's going to happen. So mm -hmm. I decided like, you yeah, know, that was, that was fine. That was fun, but that's not going to be, it's more so just track it and be proud of your accomplishment. Yeah. Just that, and that whatever that number is because uh -huh. 60 or 70 bucks is also fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> well, and also putting that, that number goal also made like the way I was tracking last year to not really work. Mm -hmm. So I have like, just like been writing stuff down. Right. And then last year Barnes and Nobles was handing book journals out. And I thought, yeah. Oh, that'd be cool. I'll like, have it's them. cute. It's adorable. It has like a little, like, you know, ribbon on it and everything. This did not work for me at mm -hmm. all. And one of the main things is I like my reading, uh, like tracking to be separated by the year. Mm -hmm. So I can be like, Oh, I read this in this year and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and so like this has a hundred slots in it. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to get to the end of that, but I'm just like, well, I don't want to carry this over right. to next year because I want to be able to like, look at them by year. Yeah. It also was frustrating to me because I was like, Oh, I want to see how many nonfiction books I read this year. Well, I can't just go Pull look at that my, number. Now I'm sitting there like counting through the list, trying to figure out which one that, I was like, this is not going to work for me. Something, <laughs> And I'm an analog girly. Yeah. You know, I love, I love calligraphy. I, I started doing calligraphy like in third grade. I love a good journal. I love a good fountain pen. Like your girl could sit down and do an illuminated manuscript. Like we like some analog stuff over here, but there are some things for which like digital is just superior. Well, and also like it's them deciding what they think is important to write down for a book. Mm -hmm. And so there are a lot of like, you know, for each book you have like a page that has mm -hmm. certain questions. And I think that's a good place to start. But may I say for your personality, that's not, no. that's never going to work. We're, we're all like, it's, like, okay. I'll to... just got to say for people who don't know her preferred notebook doesn't even have lines. No, nope. she's like, don't fence me. in. No, like that's, <laughs> I mean, 
I, I had someone tell me one time I should start a gratitude journal and I looked at all these gratitude journals that were like very defined. I'm like, don't tell me what to do. <laughs> yeah, she, I will not. <laughs> it's not going to happen for you. But, this also, one. <laughs> but also like, I don't care who the publisher is. Right. I'm not going to go like, be like, oh, she, like, especially with audiobooks, you have to like open the screen back up and like scroll through. I was like, who is the publisher yeah. on this? Yeah. I don't care. So like yeah. that line is always blank, but then that line, like having blank lines makes me frustrated. Mm. So like... Anytime when someone else is decide, which we all know this, someone else is deciding what is important information, I'm just like, I feel a little claustrophobic right now. <laughs> well, you have strong opinions of your own of what you'd want to fulfill. Right. Well, and I think to me, it's just there are some things that are important to know and the other things where it's just like, this is ancillary information that I don't mm -hmm. think... It's, it's particularly, you know, I don't want to spend my time trying to figure this out. Like, another, and that's another thing too, is just like, I want to be able to just like fill this in really quickly. Mm -hmm. Cause a lot of times, you know, it's like, oh, Sunday night, I'm just going to write down what I wrote this week or right. read this week. But then you're going through and you're just like, okay, and this is what this one and this one. Okay. Right. And yeah. Or you leave it to later and then you're like, I kind of forgot. Well, I know it's like, it has like a start date, finish date. And sometimes it would be like, I don't actually remember yeah. either of those, you know, yeah. like that's the, all of these things are unimportant. And so I finally decided like, okay, I need to kind of be in control and have a better system. And, and like I said, I was like making my own for mm -hmm. a while, but then you're like handwriting everything out and that yeah. can get kind of frustrating. Yeah. So decided this year, we're going to go a different route. Yeah. Um, for goals themselves, my main goals are, one, to continue to stick to my diversification, mm -hmm. just to be like solid. There are certainly times where I'll like deep dive on an author or deep dive on a genre, but you know, not to just get stuck in that yeah. rut. There was a time in my life where my books were just like mysteries and historical nonfiction, yeah. which I still love. Yeah. I still home love. Home base. Home base. But it has significantly increased, honestly, just the number of books I read. Mm -hmm to say like, oh no, I'm going to try something new. Mm -hmm. um, my other I would reason, say a new home base for you is probably speculative at this point. I, at this point, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. I think that's a, you know. It's a, a contender. It's yeah, coming it's up. fighting. <laughs> the, the mystery to me, I think, is just very nostalgic. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of like how I fell in love with reading as like a young teenager. My, mm -hmm. my mom just had like one random Agatha Christie in the house and we found it and read it and was like, well, that's well, a off life. Off to the to races. Yeah. So for me, it's a more of like a nostalgic thing, mm -hmm. which is probably why I read them around like Christmas time and that sort of thing. Right. But yeah, when it comes to books that I'm really more passionate about right now, it's more speculative and paranormal and, you know, science fiction especially. So yeah. yeah. My other main goals, I do have a list of books that one I'm in the middle of that I need to just finish because mm -hmm. this is a bit ridiculous at this point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and two, a number of books that um, I just really would like to read. Mm -hmm. And I would like to commit to be like this year, I would like to yeah. read these books. Yeah. So those are kind of my main goals for this mm -hmm. year. How about you? Well, let's start with what did you do this yeah. year? So um, every year, my number goal, I put it at 52 because I would, that's a number that I would be proud of a book a week would be a great accomplishment. In the past, I've always had a really hard time doing goals. And I've talked about this on my YouTube channel before because <laughs> <laughs> goal is almost always like sort of the feeling you have when the book is like, here, right? Fill out these types the of things thing, about yeah. it. Like the minute I give myself a goal, I almost immediately have like a rebellious <laughs> feeling towards <laughs> it and like resistance comes yeah, in. Yeah. I don't know what that's about. I need to talk to my therapist. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> So I would have that, but then I also would like, I would use it as a way to kind of punish myself or like if I didn't f follow through on it, I'd be like, yeah, I guess you don't follow through on it. I'd have a lot of negative self talk yeah, yeah. about it. Like it was not a health, I didn't have a healthy relationship with goal setting. It was definitely a, a way for me to put markers that I would, knew I would fail and then punish myself for failing. It's, it's fine. It's Which, fine. <laughs> let's all stop and say like, if it's a goal you put on for yourself, yeah. like, like, that's not worth like beating yourself up for. It's right. just something you would like to do. Right, exactly. So um, 52 has been working really well for me for the past few years. I've hit it every year. I'm on 49 books right now, which I'm almost done with War and Peace. So I think I'm going to finish that and maybe but, a couple more audiobooks. I'm going to hit it. It's pretty impressive when you want to do, like in essence, a book a week. 
And one of them is War and Peace. I'm, I'm impressed. I, I'm very proud of myself, and I will slip it into casual conversation the way people who run marathons slip theirs into casual. <laughs> this is my version of a marathon, okay? This uh, is your CrossFit. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what are you guys doing for Christmas? I'm running War and Peace. <laughs> anyway, if I do that and then get a couple more books in, I'll hit my goal and hit War and Peace, and I'll be extra proud of myself. I might, I don't know if I'll officially finish it, but I am like on track. I feel pretty good you about it. You can do it. Yeah. Okay. Flex those muscles. Yeah. Last year, I think I read like 63 or 64 books, which was like quite a few for me. Um, obviously back when I was doing like my degree, like I was writing like hundreds of books every year and it was, <laughs> for, for, <laughs> there is too much. There is, for me, there is. And you know, and there are, there are people out on the internet who are reading a hundred books, 200 books a year. I think, you know, I've always, like, the tagline for my channel, is you, if you watch some of my other videos, is always read better, not more. Because for me, it is a quality versus quantity right, thing. Right. I'm not really interested in getting in the rat race of competing with other people. I have a full-time job. You have a full-time job. We have right. lives, you know. So I like to, again, the goals are about me yeah. and my life and what I'm trying to do and respecting what, I, what my, how my life is set up. I honestly don't understand when someone can read 200 books, like, physical books a year. I'm just like... What are you not telling me about your actual life? Do you like, have one? <laughs> yeah. Well, and some of them are like they're full time booktubers, and yeah. that's what they do. So it's like, that's, well, that's that. That makes sense. I'm not judging myself. By yeah. Your your yeah. ruler. <laughs> yeah. If you, this is your job, like wow. jealous, and also <laughs> go for it. Yeah. So you know, and so I fifty two has been a consistently realistic goal for me. Um, that still stretches me and is challenging because I never really go like, it's not like I'm saying, oh, I want to do 52 books and like reading 80, 85 every year. I'm pretty right. close to 50, maybe 60, 64 was like a high year for me. That was like a lot of books for me. So it's like, that's pretty realistic and on target for right. me to both hit, but also it's like, it's, it's also not 12, which like <laughs> I, is way too low for me, but would be a great goal for many people. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, my husband's usually in that range. We mm -hmm. always get into this thing where I'm like, oh yeah, I've read 60. And he's like, well, I read longer books than you. And I'm like, well, that's very fair. You read doorstops. I'm not, I have very few doorstop books in my book. So yeah. fair. That's a, com we can't really like. It's always not always apples to apples. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So in the end also, and it's also like every, everyone's reading journey is different and everyone's reading goals are different. Your goals should be highly personal in my yeah, perspective. It should be what you what you yeah. want to read. Yeah. You know, I mean there are always times when you're like, Oh, I want to read this because it might be challenging to me and it's not mm -hmm. necessarily something like, I'm gonna curl up into this book and have a good time. Like, no, it's gonna challenge me. But it should still be something mm -hmm. you want to read. One hundred percent. Other reading goals that I have, I have well, I'll call the I have two reading projects that I'm doing right now. One of them is reading all of Shakespeare. I got through one play this year, so we're going to have to step that up next year. And then reading all of Agatha Christie, which we've talked about previously. And I've re gotten now through all of the Miss Marples, and I'm part of the way through the uh, through the Poirots. Number four is up next. So I that's like, I don't know, 20, 13, 15 to 20 books of, of Agatha Christie at this point out of her like 100. Roughly 100, yeah. yeah. So making our way through that. And those are projects that are not bound to the calendar year. I, I'm going to let of... them take as long as yeah. they take. Yeah. And then my third thing that I have going on is what I call my inspiration lists. And this is part of my diversification thing. But I also have to respect my intuitive quality to my reading. Like I can't be too strict with myself about it. So I just found some lists online of... Um, I got... All of the sort of like suggested classic Russian authors. So War and Peace is one of those books that I'm reading in that project. Um, and then I got a list of Chinese, Japanese, and Korean authors. We're going to move on to other countries after this, but this is sort of like my focus right now. And their lists that I pull from. And whatever I feel like reading, if a book resonates with me, if it sounds good, if I connect with it, then I'm going to read it. But if it doesn't work, I don't try and push myself too hard on it. And so those are my inspiration lists. Oh, and my third inspiration list <laughs> Sorry, I have a lot of things going on. We're very inspired today. <laughs> yes, is my 1001 books. So I got, the, I don't know, there's like this book that's like 1001 books to read before you die, which like I had an actual conniption when I saw what was in it because there were like 20 pages for like pre 1700s. And I was like, that's, you don't think people should read the Iliad? Like I, I, like my mind was brown, but it's a totally different perspective on like books you should read. And so it's certainly diverse 
from what I've been reading in the past. A lot in the 1900s, and I don't, I've like read like two books that were published in the 1900s, guys. Like, you're, you're embracing a new world, yes. in essence. A, a, a level of modernity. We're coming up to just last century, and I can just finally get out of the, like the Middle Ages and ancient literature and kind of like get up to the present day. That'd probably be good. I will say another thing that I realized that works for me that wasn't working for me in the past was I have to make the books I want to read easily accessible. Mm -hmm. Um, and part of that was I finally got an audible subscription this year because I am a serious mood reader when I'm, I feel like reading this book or this genre, this I'm going to, you know, that's where I'm at. Um, and I do try to, whenever possible, get my books from the library mm -hmm. because I can't afford to like buy a hundred books a year. <laughs> Same. Yeah. So library as much as possible. However, I was having this issue that I'd be like into like reading this book and I really want to read this and I want to read the series and there would be like a six week to a six month hold in the library. Yeah. And especially by six months, I that am, mood is gone. I'm gone. I don't, <laughs> nope, not interested we've, anymore. We've moved uh, on to other yeah. greener pastures. Exactly. So part of like dealing with that because like part of me is just like oh shoot like I did really want to read that and I don't when am I going to feel like this again to just kind of remove that mm -hmm. I got an audible account um and that has enabled me to be like okay I just want to read this now right. I do have like a ton of different audio uh, audiobook apps so I have Hoopla mm -hmm. which I found out is only connectable to libraries in certain areas. Yeah. So it's it's going to be like touch and go if you have that in your area. But Hoopla, all of their books are available immediately. Mm -hmm. They do have a smaller supply, mm -hmm. but I've consistently found the books I want are there. Mm -hmm. Then I have Libby, which is another library app, and that one is connected to more libraries and does have more books those are usually have holds on them. And in case you guys didn't know, you can sign up for more than one library card yes. and connect it to your Libby account, which yeah. is really great. I have, well, we both have at this point, traveled to a larger city yeah. to get a library card because more books mm -hmm. are accessible in larger yeah. cities. It turns out. Yeah. yeah. Goals. New and York. there are quite a few that you can sign up to online. One of my, I've told one of my other friends about this and she's like, she like went ham hey, on it. And she has like five library cards on her living yeah. for like all her kids and stuff. I just, I play that game. Like I'm yeah. doing as much as I can. So I do try as much as possible to get books off of that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I'm just like, if I, I want to read this now, I'm just going to put a credit down mm -hmm. and not waste the opportunity. Yeah. I did that with um, Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Uh, my husband and I read that together and then I just was like, okay, I want to just like have it on and read it in the background and like, you know, mm -hmm. experience it again. Yeah. And I was very much in the mood to do it and I could not get the books for like, I, it was something like oh, several months. And by the time it came up, I was like, well, it's like summer now. And this is just not, <laughs> it's a, not summer, a summer book. It's not a summer book. And I have yet to go back and get in that mood again. That was mm -hmm. kind of what told me like, okay, it's time. Like I need to just yeah do this. And it, it, Audible has been a fantastic addition to my life. In addition to like enabling me to do that with you have an Audible subscription, there's also a lot of books that are included mm -hmm. just as part of it. And I have found so many new authors that way. Yeah. That has been an excellent resource. Because you're just like, well, I'm just going to try this author. Mm -hmm. There's no commitment issues. Like, you know, I'm not going to waste the credit on this. I'm just going to try them. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they're terrible. Yeah. Like, sometimes you've like, oh, okay, regrets on that. But, you know, you can just push delete. And no, there was nothing. No lost. evidence. But I've honestly also found, like, some of my favorite new mm -hmm. authors that way. Yeah. Yeah. So I think making things easier for you to accomplish your goals is also a really yeah. important part. Don't make a goal that's going to be hard to actually accomplish. Yeah. I do find like I, I'm also a mood reader, so I face many of those blocks. I think maybe I have like a little bit more longevity on my mood than what you're describing, okay, but I'm probably not like, much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are okay, nobody's mood lasts for six months. <laughs> no, no. But I could probably do like three or four weeks and then like, oh, it comes in about, oh, <laughs> don't mind if I do, you know, um, but, uh, it is, but I also have this problem where like, I'll like just go ahead and put it on hold. And then if I'm now in the middle of something else, it's like two more weeks, two more weeks, yeah, two yeah. more weeks. And yeah. so I have all these books in my Libby app that are just like, why am I in the Tumblr and never going to connect, <laughs> you know? Um, so I don't know. It's, I haven't quite solved that problem other than like just being willing to buy whatever books I want and that's not going to happen anytime soon. <laughs> Where do, 
we we can't open the floodgates on that budget line item because it'll get out of control. I mean, basically for like every possible event when people that people need to give me presents and they ask me what I want, I'm like Audible gift card. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> give me more books. <laughs> yeah. It's 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 I would take it. Absolutely. Yeah. And it, you know, one thing is like, oh, here's another thing that's like difficult for me as a reader is that um, I like reading. I read a fair amount. Mm-hmm. It's a big part of my life. Yeah. Big part of my, the hours that I spend in a day. But I also don't like having a bunch of stuff. These are your shelves. And she yes. has more over here. And there's more books over there. there. Yes. And my husband and I are in discussions about like, Should when, we do, get another one? when do we need to get another one? Yeah. This is and where are we going to put it? This is who we are and what yeah. we do. No, like literally the first time he came over to my house to pick me up, I opened the door and he saw how many books I had in the background. And he was like, Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and wasn't it when you were like house hunting, you kept telling your real estate agent? Oh yeah, agent, yeah. Like she'd be like, "Isn't this house fantastic?" And we're both like, "There's no place to put sh- bookshelves." And she'd be like, "The kitchen." And I'm like, "Well, yeah, but where are we putting the bookshelves?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's th- I have the house too where we were house hunting around the same time, and this is like a thing that is a pet peeve of mine where like new builds, at least in our area, they would have like a pre-designated like TV alcove. Yeah. Like into the wall. And I'd be like, well, now you can't like arrange your furniture any other way. Right, right. And yeah. They, well, her husband's a filmmaker, so they, they're into movies and stuff like that. And, but we don't watch TV and I don't own a TV. Actually, it was funny. My niece asked me about it and she got like, she's four. And she got very concerned that I didn't have it. Like, it came, kept coming back up over things. Are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> she was just like, but where is your TV? <laughs> is it in your room? And I'm like, no, not in my room either. We, we don't have one. And she was just like, but where is it? <laughs> like, <laughs> I am the kooky aunt who has no kids and no TV. And therefore, you do not need a TV outcome. Right. Also, those things get so outdated so fast. Yeah, and then it's like, well, obviously I didn't want it, and then I'm like mad. It's like it's like that book with this pre-filled thing. How dare you? I want to live my life the way I want to. Stop telling me what to do. Anyway, so it's I think it's very presumptuous. Yes. So there were many houses like that that we did not buy, and the current house that we have suits us, our lifestyle, and our anti TV lifestyle. I honestly was surprised at how many houses we saw that were clearly just the rooms were just designed to put a television in yeah which like yeah like most of us have a tv whatever but also some of us additionally have books (laughs) yes and want to do other things with our leisure hours yeah but anyway i'll stop griping because i sound like a superior snob that's not how i'm trying to sound it's just just my life need space for the bookshelves that's all we're saying it's very important (laughs) yeah so anyway so now i have this conflict my conflict is is that i don't like to have too much stuff i feel very responsible when i bring stuff into my house and it's also a problem with like (laughs) i'll say this i shouldn't say this before christmas but like with gift giving like because sometimes people give you gifts that are nice to have but like you would never choose for yourself and then i'm like no, I'm responsible I for know. it. Yeah, I, I can know. find a place in my house to keep it clean and keep it safe. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, like it's too much. It's you immediate know? stress. Yeah, <laughs> which of course is not how the gift giver means it. But anyway, but some of my pathologies are coming out in this episode, mm. I guess. Well, also like with like my husband and I obviously collect a lot of books, but we also like every one to two years go through and get rid of Mm -hmm. a fair amount of books and just like, we'll usually clear off a shelf and just be like, Hey, we bought these books. We read them. They weren't for us. They no longer, or like we've had them for a long time. They no longer really represent us, you know? So like, I think also that's a huge part of like kind of responsible book collecting Mm -hmm. is just like being aware that you don't have to like keep every book you touched. It's okay to be like, you know, this wasn't for me. I don't need it taking up space Mm -hmm. in my, in my house or yeah. In my life, really. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm a big purger of all kinds. I'm always decluttering to the point that it's like also pathological. But yeah, my books get frequently cold. I actually saw this like Instagram video the other day, which I had to immediately show to my husband because I was like, this is offensive. Where it's like, are you new to book collecting? Here's the things you have to look for. A fancy spine, painting on the pages, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, that's not book collecting. Book collecting is just like, having books that you love mm-hmm. and just owning the things that you love. It's not yeah. being like the pages have been hand painted like that. Yeah. No, stop. And it's like, you know, I understand the appeal of wanting to have attractive books. Like 
although I think most books just are, are attractive, attractive because I like them. I don't know. Oh, but I was going to say like, I tend to have a very small collection of books that I haven't read. So like right now I just got a couple new books and, and then we're going to have Christmas, but usually I'm hovering around like 10 or so books I that I TBR. Yeah. Of physical books that I own that are unread in my house. And that sometimes can be limiting in that way that you're talking about where it's like the thing that I want to read isn't necessarily immediately accessible to me. I tend to read physical more than anything else. I'll do an ebook here and there. I'll do an audio book here and there, but like a good 75% of my reading is in a physical book. And when I keep it so slim, that can be hard. I use my library heavily, but like but I also, but then again, I'm like, oh, there's stuff and I have to be responsible for it and I have to find a spot for it. I have a lot of anxiety around it. <laughs> so you know, it's a tension that I'm There's I'm always a certain amount of, you know, responsibility and owning mm-hmm. things and deciding like, does this add to my life or does it not? Mm-hmm. Books, owning books, I, I tell people like it's a genetic thing. Like my grandfather, my grandfather owns so many books. He lived in Los Angeles and when the major earthquake hit in the 90s, mm-hmm. Did middle they of, die? In the middle of the night, he flips on the lights. The books had fall like so many books oh, had fallen on the shelf. They didn't die. He, he went they went all the way up to the bed. He could not he had to like crawl over piles over books. of books to get out. So like, you know, owning books has been a part of my family's life and it's always like kind of, you know, a fun nostalgic thing. Like mm-hmm. this is what we do. And so for me, having a lot of books in the house actually makes the house feel like happy to me yeah. and feel like home. Yeah, um, if you're not this close to being crushed to death by them, like, are you living? <laughs> I know, right? Like, honestly, you know, our family was not like, oh my God, you have too many books. We were like, that's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you know you're living your best life when yeah. you have to like crawl over piles <laughs> of books <laughs> to get out. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, If it brings joy to your life, do it. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't, I'm not one of these people that's like, oh, you just can't own things. Like, no, just own things that make you happy. And if they don't make you happy, we have a ton of options for reading now that don't take up physical space. Yeah. Obviously, audiobooks and ebooks are available. You know, it can all be contained in one little device and it's not taking up space. So Mm -hmm. you can still, I mean, even for me, having a ton of books, the majority of books I read during the year are audiobooks and occasionally ebooks because a lot of the books here are books that I've been collecting since I was like mm-hmm. literally like 15 years old. Right. So that's why we have so many. And my husband's the same way. He has books that he here that he bought in high school. So, you know, I would not be able to read the amount of books that I read mm-hmm. in physical because for one thing, I just couldn't afford that. Yeah. You know, but also like it's difficult to have as an adult with a job and a house and a dog that takes as much attention as a toddler, you know, <laughs> yeah. sitting down to read a book all the time is not really an option, but you know, the many new methods we have now, like that's, yeah. that's one of the reasons that we can read so much. Yeah. And I know that there, like I, going back to the like aesthetic book thing and like having collections or buying multiples of a favorite book and different editions and that sort of thing. Like, or the, you know, the fairy loot crates and the (laughs) special editions and the British editions and whatnot. Like, I appreciate that they're attractive. It doesn't do that much for me. It's just not where my motivation is. I totally get why other people are into it. Um, I, you know, there's kind of like a meme that's gone around on TikTok where they're like, oh, like buying books and reading books are two different hobbies. My hobbies are reading books and reorganizing my books. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> That's what so, I was doing last night. Yeah. If you've watched our YouTube videos before, you probably noticed there are some differences back here because yeah. I was like, Christmas is coming. Uh, you, My husband has asked for a lot of books. I've asked for some books. We um, need to prepare. We Make need, way. Oh, yeah. There was, there was one year a couple of years ago where between – us buying ourselves on Christmas sales and family members getting up. We both had gotten like a stack of this large and I'm like, we're going to need to purge before. So yeah. now this year I'm like just planning for it. Yeah. Like we need to, cause there are books on the shelf where, you know, yeah. realistically I didn't actually enjoy those and yeah. they don't need to be taking up space. Yeah. And that just, you know, prepares you for the new world. <laughs> yeah. Which really, I have one bookshelf that's not as tall as this and not as wide as this and then I have one bookshelf that's a wide as this but it's a three tier yeah and I still have a little bit of room and my husband's records are on one of the shelves but I am thinking (laughs) about upgrading and getting new bookshelves (laughs) but that's like 
down the line. So we'll see. Is a trip to Ikea in order? I might do the Billy bookshelves. They have, okay, I don't know if you've seen this, but they have like a pre-grouped one where you get two full-size Billy bookshelves, the corner, and then another, which would work well because I have like this like L, which is where my books are right Mm -hmm. now. This is tempting. I know, but it's not available for delivery right now. Oh, so we're driving. But well, you know I'm what, kind that of hoping that it'll be like after Christmas, it'll be available for delivery. We'll see. I don't know if it's like always that way or not. We're to... we're heavily committed to Target bookcases here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We'll we'll see. I probably wouldn't drive for it. I would get a different option. But we'll... anyway, some is... some things are worth it, and that would be very cool in your living room. I... I'm also very bad about encouraging people to collect books. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no, it makes me happy. It should make you happy too. It's fine. Have more. <laughs> yeah. And and then I'm like riddled with anxiety. Yeah. Like I have two shelves to be responsible for. Um, we, this is like something my husband and I, we always talk about when on our honeymoon, we went to Hatchard's, which is like this fantastic bookstore in uh, um, London that's been open for like 300 years. And he comes around the corner and he's got like a stack this big and he's like, make me put some back. And I was like, my stack is bigger, so no. <laughs> you guys are uh, codependent. <laughs> oh, absolutely. With your books. And we will not be fixing that problem. <laughs> yeah, it's not really a problem. Oh, and the other reason why I kind of don't go in for, like, the fancy editions. Well, one is, like, I never buy a hard copy. I prefer a soft cover. Like I the like, weight of it. I like reading a soft cover. It's more comfortable. And the other thing is as I have talked about multiple times on the channel, and I will die on this hill, and I feel like this is really important, I love annotating. I love seeing my journey. I love rereading mm. books that I've annotated. I like to come back to my notes. I think the for me, I love consuming a book in an interactive way, and I'm never not gonna dog ear. I'm never not gonna annotate. Things will be circled and written in the margins. I will have post-it notes in there. I will have pieces of paper typed and folded and stuck in there and spreading the binding. Like, I am rough on my books and I'm rough on them because it the book is for me. The book is for me to consume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like being a... Okay. Where were we? I don't remember. <laughs> I was making an emphatic point about writing in my books at some point during, recently. Well, let's But that's just, my point. Yeah. Let's just go there. Okay. Wild card here. I'm just going to throw this out. Yeah. So I heard someone today on the book talks because yeah. we spend time there. <laughs> right. Talking about how they think a fantastic gift for people would be to buy a book that you love, annotate it, and give it to somebody. And I'm like, I don't know about that. I don't uh, know. I mean, I've definitely read used books that have had previous people's annotations in them. And I do... That you know, that's a different kind of journey where it's sort of like fifty percent, huh? I wouldn't have thought about that, and fifty percent, what an idiot! <laughs> you know? Like that, I will be honest. That's like kind of you kind of. I feel like I get end up in this process of like kind of judging the person, which it's like a completely anonymous person when it's a used book, right? Like whoever it was that like made these notes before. But like, I mean, unless you're like entering into a deep conversation and this per- you like know that this person wants to be conversant mm-hmm. about this yeah. book with you or you know that they like want to engage that way i mean that it's pretty presum it's one of those things that's kind of presumptuous. presumptuous yeah yeah i also feel like if you're going to get someone a book base it on what you what they want to read not be like i really like this book here read it yeah which is not that I do that to my husband, but <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, there's sometimes you have a conversation. You're like, there are certain things that you ask someone who you're close to in your life to participate in with you so that you can share that with them or you can have conversations about it. And since you and your husband are in an eight year long relationship yeah. about, with its conversation about books and movies, it's suiting. It's but- possible that every time he's like, I don't know what I'm going to read next. I run to the book shelf and point to Dune and the Southern Reach trilogy. <laughs> and I'm just like, one of these. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, you, gotta, yeah. you need to be in, the, I feel like, the right relationship sure. to be in that, that place. And also, I kind of, like, for me, like, I like my books pretty, like, kept in pretty good condition. Yeah. So I think that's also something you have to pay attention to is, like, is the person you're giving him the type of person that's okay with having mm-hmm. a book written up? Or are they kind yeah. of... Because, like, some of us there just, like, There are people who are, like, horrified when I tell them. And... and I have this other interesting reaction. I had a friend once be like, well, but when do you read for fun? And I'm like, this is fun! (laughs) Don't make fun of me! (laughs) I was there for that day, and I think that was just, like, honest confusion. Mm -hmm. Like, 
Wait, but what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, to each their own, and I respect that. But this is how I like to read, yeah. you know. And I, I, I mean, even as someone who is a hardcore annotator, but I'm also just very respectful of other people's boundaries. Like I would never impose. I have a hard enough time, like buying books for people just as a title that you think they'll enjoy is hard enough. Yeah. But I, but maybe this person isn't really com- coming from the perspective of I'm getting you something that I've thought about as like you will like. it. I think it is coming from that perspective of this is something that I really love and I hope you'll love it too. Yeah. And I yeah. want to connect with you through it. But yeah, I would like, it would have to be a close relationship. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's intimate. That's like, like, uh, wow. Also, that's a... It's a lot of time to spend on a gift. <laughs> yeah. That is some like basically hand well, making a gift. And I also wonder too, because I have seen the way that other people annotate in books and you know, obviously it's a very personal way of doing it. And you know, I feel like when people use what I see a lot from many booktubers and book talkers with youth and color coded tabs is that there is a type of reader who's like, Oh, here's a kissing scene or, Oh, here's a really good line mm-hmm. that I liked or, Oh, yeah. they're like kind of tagging moments in a book based on their plot based content. That's really not what I'm doing when I'm annotating. Right. Like, yeah. And I also don't need that. Like I can see that that's a kissing scene. Yeah. Like when I read it, I ran it across it. Like I don't need your help like observing that and internalizing you ever- that. Because I do get into like reading what people like annotate on Kindle. Yeah. I'm always just like, like 575 people highlighted this line. I'm like, why? <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes it's a good line, but sometimes, sometimes it's, it's like, yeah. but other times it's like, okay, no, that's, I won't be highlighting. I feel like that, like the way Kindle works, like it encourages you to be like, everyone else liked this line. Yeah. So you do too. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, overall it's like, and especially in its like, Goodreadsification of it too, because those can sync onto Goodreads and mm, all of that mm. sort of thing. It's like it makes it more communal. That's not the kind of reading community that I'm looking for. I'm looking for this kind of reading community, right? Where you're like really discussing, yeah. you know, the book itself, to, what your to feelings have like are. This, like sort of unwashed void of people in the in the ether somewhere, like being like, oh, I mean, and like that is like <laughs> I don't know how to connect with that. Like it doesn't yeah. really mean anything to me. I don't know. Yeah. No. I. I agree there's I've tried to like you know join like book discords or Mm -hmm. you know book Facebook groups and I'm always like out within like a couple of weeks because I'm like this this is not for me there's a a book discord maybe I shouldn't say this because I'm still on it that has invited me to it's a classics books book discord and they do a fantastic job with the community they it's a very very involved active discord which you can join my discord but it's very quiet (laughs) i'm there now (laughs) and we do we do have opportunities for you guys to chat with us about the podcast too but anyway um and it's a very active discord they pick a classic of the month they do like reading updates they do chats online they do a poem you know every i don't know what the cycle is on the poems but they do and they have and then they have all of these you know different channels where you can talk about your favorite authors and books and stuff like that all classics focused and they invited me to come which is very nice because obviously i talk about classics all the time but like for me it's like an overwhelming amount of community mm. and maybe it's because i'm an introvert so even that amount of like online conversation yeah. it becomes a chore rather than like a blessing and also like I have just very rich I, in real life friendships. So online community feels very shallow to me. And I have a really hard time even like considering it community. Like I know yeah. we talked about like our online communities and safe, safe spaces and stuff. And like for me, and maybe I'm like too much of an elder millennial, I don't know. Or I'm just like, this is very hard for me to feel like socially connected and like like my relationships are deep and meaningful Like this just, I I just feel like I'm talking out into a void with the internet. Well, and also with the internet, I like the two things I experienced was like, one, the conversations were not particularly deep. Um, or like, you know, you post something and like, because 50 people are all posting at the same time, like no one actually, it's like people talking over each other or like people just being like very disrespectful about the idea that someone possibly didn't like like a book on the level that they did or like Mm -hmm. if you post like a question about something that they think shouldn't be questioned it's just like 
That's a weird place about the internet for me because mm -hmm. like when you're talking to someone one-on-one, -on -one, mm -hmm. you're never going to behave like that because right. you're facing them one-on-one. -on -one. You're going to be respectful. Mm -hmm. But on the internet, people can just feel like they can just basically like be as rude as possible because what yes. are you going to do about that? And I'm like, well, I'm going to leave this community because it's not a very nice community. That's what I'm going to do about it. Yeah. I, th I think, yeah, that's something that I've definitely experienced. You know, I have a video on YouTube that has garnered a lot of attention on Bunny and the novel. And it's been super popular on the internet this past year. I don't usually read a lot of modern books, so it's gotten a lot, way more views than my typical videos. And there are people who agree with me and there are people who disagree with me. And I have, I mean, up until recently, had a really hard time knowing exactly how to engage with that because I'm not very good at conflict immediately like I'm in fight or flight because like someone was like and the most people in my comments are like totally reasonable and even if they disagree with they're never like die bitch you know like I don't get those kinds of comments which is very nice it's because my channel is like too small um but I think I finally gotten to the point where I now know how to sort of stand behind what I've said in a firm way because I I usually think I'm right but we all do. I believe in my position. Right. You're not taking a position that you don't right. honestly believe in. Right. And I think one of the things that I've sort of learned to say to people in these kinds of contexts is like, you know, I understand why you feel that way about the book, but my position is not without merit. And people kind of come in with this attitude. When they disagree with me, they tend to come in with an attitude of, I can't believe you read it that way, you know, or whatever. And it's like, no, I have very good reasons for why. Yeah. I I'm not just way. sitting here being like, I don't like it. Like, yeah. no, you have a reason where you either like it or don't like it. You know, you, they, and I articulate myself well and yeah, I have it's well, a thoughtful process for you. It's right. not just like, Oh, it was bad. And <laughs> I'm not saying you have to agree with me, but you can't just act like my position is without merit. Like you're totally welcome to have your own experience and your own right. opinion of the book. But like my position is with merit. I have good reason. I have evidence. I have all of these reasonings of like, I've articulated an argument for why I feel this way about the book. So yeah. anyway, should we move on? We're like, <laughs> we've been having a good time. We're yeah. just at this point talking about reading and yeah. the experience of reading, which is important right. because honestly, like why have goals if you don't have a positive experience with reading totally. and like, these are some of the things that can add to the experience mm -hmm. of reading or take away from the experience of reading. Yeah. You know, and I feel like a lot of people do kind of get caught up in like, I have a negative experience somehow in reading and I connect it to my ability to read yeah. to like me liking reading and disliking reading. Um, <laughs> I actually knew someone who I, I was trying to talk to books with books about them. Cause I was mm -hmm. like, Hey, this is something I like to talk to. Like, I'll just ask, like, are you reading anything right now? This person literally said to me, I read a book once and I didn't like it. And I was like, what book was it? And she's like, it was 50 shades of gray and I didn't like it. So I guess I just don't like books. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, it's a specific I, kind of book. I, I, have you considered trying other books, <laughs> yeah. you know, but I think people like get into this like mode of like, oh, I had a negative experience. And, and especially I'm with like a book that's that popular and seems like right. everybody, everybody likes, likes it. it. So like, I must, there must be something, something wrong, wrong with, with me. me. Yeah. yeah. Which like, that's another thing that I find very like telling. And it's something that I struggle with too, because when I see something being popular that didn't resonate with me, I, I have that thought of like, Oh, am I wrong here? Is it something wrong with me? Which is like such a silly thought to have about like a book and like something that's so very subjective, but like people project a lot, like, and they'll project in my comments a lot too, of like, Oh, you must feel blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, I don't. Do you? Is that perhaps more about you than it is about me? Because I feel like I just got an insight into this complete anonymous stranger on the internet, wherever you may be. <laughs> Another thing that I think would be good, like this is something I saw uh, again on the book talks that I feel like is a really important thing to bring up in terms of like goals, because this was a goal that was expressed. Um, a person was talking about a friend of theirs who was not into reading, mm -hmm. but made the decision that she wanted to read more. Yeah. Excellent decision, except she announced that she was going to be a fantasy girly uh -huh. having not read any fantasy. Yeah. She just decided like she was going to do this. She was going to be a fantasy girly and read yeah. fantasy books. And to me, it's like, if you're not very into reading books, explore, yeah. try reading it's things, like, find, it, you know, don't books, immediately be like, this is who I am. Books aren't fashion. No. So like, it's not the same thing as being like, Oh, I'm into cottage core now. And I'd like to bring in like coastal grandmother into my looks or whatever, you know, whatever yeah. your aesthetic might be. Like, I feel like that's kind of an approach where that I would see someone who, 
that sounds like that to me. Yeah, you know, where yeah. you're like, oh, I'm going to choose to participate in this fandom or if this some this culture subculture, yeah. and this group of people because I want to be a part of their community. But like, that's what <laughs> that's such a bad like yeah. this is like blowing my mind i'm like my brain is broken well i feel like part of that is like that is also setting yourself up for disappointment mm -hmm. because there's a good chance that you won't like fantasy i struggle deeply with fantasy i have yeah. like two fantasy books i like yeah. you know and i feel like if your goal is to be part of this subculture you can end up alienating yourself because mm -hmm. what if you just what if you're a science fiction person in yeah. fact what if you actually like romance what yeah. if you are a mystery person yeah and you're trying to shove yourself into this goal of fitting into this fantasy subculture and then it's like you're missing the opportunity of a discovering the books that you like and b then connecting with people who actually do like the same books as you right because that because is, there's going to be a community everywhere. yeah there's a community with every every genre yeah and i think that and classics people are the worst <laughs> no they're fun <laughs> try being in the writer community yeah. it's just like people endlessly being like i didn't write tonight i am a terrible person yeah. and then tomorrow i didn't write today either i'm a terrible like maybe yeah. just don't just, make it a daily habit yeah, make just, it a weekly habit and then just, you'll be okay it's gonna be okay yeah. <laughs> so twofold question for you what goals are you taking into the next year and do you have any new goals that you're introducing or, or ones that you're obviously i think you already indicated that you're not going to do the number not going to do the number i'm going to be satisfied with whatever number i get mm -hmm. i know because of the way you're going to read a lot i'm going anyway. to read a lot of books i take a book with me on a in essence on a walk every single day the dog and i go for two miles that's you know at least an hour a day of book i'm reading there you so go. no numbers this year but um, I am, I have some very specific books I want to read. One of them being both you and my husband have been like, you have to read Name of the Rose. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then we could talk about it on the podcast. Exactly. So like that's, you know, I'm definitely going to read that this year. Um, I have some, actually some graphic novels that are high on my list that I want to commit to, like really like um, seminal pieces mm -hmm. in um, actually Asian culture. Mm -hmm. um, there's one particular one that I started last year and I feel like it's such an important piece because it's by one of the most like historically significant um, graphic novelists. And it's also a Japanese man writing about World War II and mm -hmm. like his frustration with like German culture and like being a part of like this, you know, this very different world than like those of us who just come from Western culture are. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was like one of those things that like was too much. Yeah. <laughs> it was so dark and heavy and it was like, I want to, I feel like this is a really important piece to like really read because I feel like I'm learning so much, but also like, this is going to take me a long time because I can only take so much of this. It's very intense. It's, it's very, it's very dark and it's very intense. So I have things like that that like uh, over the course of the year, if this takes me the whole year to like do doses at a time of it, I feel like that way too with like books like The Historian. Mm -hmm. I have really enjoyed reading that book, but it's very dark and atmospheric and I'm like this sometimes mm -hmm. I wanna be here, sometimes I don't. So like yeah. books like that, I'm just giving myself like, I can read a bunch of different books at one time. Mm -hmm. I also have like a list of authors that I've created for myself that I've either read a few of their books or quite a bit of their books and I just want to keep like really committing to like working through mm -hmm. their, um, their catalog. Oeuvre. Oeuvre. Yeah. Um, Anne Rice is definitely one of those. Mm -hmm. I read Interview with the Vampire um, and I'm reading print, uh, The Vampire Lestat. Mm -hmm. And I just found that I really enjoy her writing style yeah. and I looked up and she has like a ton of books yeah. and a ton of series. She has one about like ancient Egypt. I'm like, I'm down. Yeah. So like, she's definitely one I, I want to explore more this year because I've only read like a book and a half so far. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I have some specific authors, some specific books that I want to conquer. Mm -hmm. um, I want to keep with my diversifying and trying some more. Um, I have a huge list. I also like every year commit to like, I am going to read more physical books because the reason I don't read physical books is I'm very toxic about my time and I'm just like, no, I have to like constantly do things mm -hmm. constantly and sitting down She's like, yeah, like, look, yeah. Mm -hmm. The internet is not going to hold you accountable for <laughs> having proper rest. I need, I need to be able to say it's okay for me to sit down and read a physical book, and I am not being a bad person by doing this. <laughs> right. So every year I always commit to, like, I am going to read more physical books, which 
At this point, I'm like at five and a half mm -hmm. uh, physical books. I think I'll be at like six by the end of the year because yeah. one of them is very short. <laughs> but I do have a stack of physical books that I'm going to be like, this is my commitment to read mm -hmm. um, these these books in physical form this yeah. year. So I, I do have some very, it's more, everything I'm doing this year is more centered around specific books, specific authors, mm -hmm. um, and also like just making things fun for myself. Like, yeah. you know, I do have dark books that I want to conquer. So I also have to make sure that I have plenty of books that are like light fun and happy and light. to kind of just pull you up because yeah. I never think that, I don't think it's good to live in a, you know, marshmallow book world. Yeah. I want to take on the harder things and the mm -hmm. darker things because I think it's important to know mm -hmm. what history is, but you cannot live there. <laughs> yeah, that's also not good to stay yeah, there. You have to, I will like go in for like, you know, four or five books and then be like, okay, coming up for air now. Yeah. So it's good for me to have also authors that I know that I can just go and this is going to be like a nice, reliable, fluffy, fun yeah, time. I can just like, not, there's nothing here that's going to hurt me. I will not have to think about these I'm things. I'm going to call them your booty call books. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little, a little more uh, interesting than, I just call them marshmallow books. <laughs> I think it's we that have a book that you text in the middle of the night when you need to have a good time. Yeah. It's, <laughs> I think we have one that oh, a friend that has like, she calls like candies books and peeps books. And the candy books are like fun and happy, but the peeps books are like, just trash. And I'm like, that is so detailed to me. <laughs> we have like a whole food group of books here. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, my goals this year really just centered on very specific ones and however many books I read, I will be satisfied with because, mm -hmm. you know, every, yeah. every, every time I read a book is, you know, it's its own little accomplishment. I, yeah. did, I did this today. Right. Okay, so with those goals in mind, and now that we've discovered that the physical book journal does not work for you, how are you going to be like tracking and kind of dealing with managing the goals? Well, somebody who is sitting next to me introduced me to Notion. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I decided to check it out and see, um, actually watch some YouTube videos on like how people use this to track their reading journal. And it looks like a really great platform specifically for this. I mean, I know Notion can be used for anything you want yeah. to, but um, specifically for this, I think it's like, looks to be like a really great um, way to track it. You know what's kind of great about Notion? It's a blank page. I know. It can just be like, <laughs> it's well, a digital blank page for you. Another thing that I really liked about it was like, I can specifically um, tell it like what's what I want to track. So. Mm -hmm. No, I don't care what the publisher is, but I can go through and be like a column for did I, what, what did I feel about a column for, um, like what format did I read it in a column mm -hmm. for, like, do I own it? Cause there are some books that I've read in audio that I'm like, I love this so much. I want to own it. So right. I can go, I've like actually been tracking like which books I would like to put in our collection. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I can like just completely customize it. Yeah. So, <laughs> so Alexandra was showing me how to use Notion and she had like all these great things. And then I came home and, um, I believe I left you a message telling you that I was a chaos demon and I, I made I'm it, aware. <laughs> yeah, I don't really need to tell you that I made it completely different because like you can, you can you do can anything. Do you want. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I am actually kind of excited. Yeah. Um, and you know, and I was showing you even like I did it differently last year compared to how I'm using it this year. And because very, of the way that it like stores your data, it's very easy to re-manipulate it or move it somewhere else. So with Notion, you know, if you're someone who's comfortable exploring new programs and that sort of thing, it's a great one to explore. One, because there's just tons of, tons of stuff to explore. And two, because it's like, well, you figure out what works for you kind of as you use the tool. Well, and, um, I've tracked it. I'm like building it out with a couple of different things, but just for the reading journal itself, the mm -hmm. list for 2024, I actually found someone who had made a template. a template and I just like kind of edited a couple of things in and out mm -hmm. and it was already like all set up. So mm -hmm. that's, I am very excited about tracking it this way. Um, they offers me a lot of options in terms of like, Hey, I can see mm -hmm. how many nonfiction books did I read this year? That's right. an easy thing to look up. You know, I don't have to, I can just, I don't have to like, write specific things. I can just be like, Oh, I liked it. I didn't like it. I can, mm -hmm. you know, and if I want to, I can add more notes to it. Um, I've added, I've added in some of the authors that I want to specifically, um, 
read more of this year. I've put in all of their books. People these days have a lot of books. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I've been able to go through and like write notes on which, like, I'm really excited because one of my authors that I really enjoy reading wrote a series like way back, like this is her first series. And I read it recently and I was just like, oh man, like she's so much more of a mature writer now. Like this idea that she had is great, but like, it's hard yeah. to go back. She's going to rewrite it, re rewrite it this year and re-release it. So I have like that down as like, oh, okay, nice. we, we're keeping an eye out for this book yeah. series come out. Cause I'm like, yes, this was a good idea. Yeah. We just weren't there yet. So yeah. like, there's so many things like that you can track. Um, I have a constantly running uh, list that's just been on my phone. <laughs> like book recommendations. Yeah, yeah, like people who tell me they like books. I'm in Barnes and Nobles and I'm like, well, I don't want to buy that now, but that looks really interesting. Yeah. I'm flipping through Audible and they're like, you know, recommending them. I, I have to say, I watch I, book content as yeah. a book talk comes up and I go, ugh. You know, that goes into my <laughs> yeah, favorites, you know, yeah, to, exactly. to void of my favorites where I'll never come back and remember that this was a book that I was interested in. Well, yeah, and that's been the problem with this list. So what this enabled me to do is um, I broke it down by, I put in the column for genre and then told it to organize it by genre. So now I can be like, oh, I'm feeling like a romance right now. Mm -hmm. And I can go in there and just see which one is a romance instead of having to like scroll through this whole list and try to remember right. which one was in that category. So this just let me like put them all in there. So I am very excited about doing my reading journal this way. Mm -hmm. I have it on my phone and my computer. Yeah. I was actually <laughs> sitting in like a doctor's office this week, like typing in books. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we add that to the list. Oh, yeah. So it's yeah. like, something that you can, I mean, my, my phone battery was dead by the time I actually was done with the appointment, but that's not important. <laughs> so, so taking a running leap off the cliff of we're notion. Just, we're just going to go in because I do not do things in half measures and we all know that. <laughs> so how about you? What yes. are your goals for this year? So we're going to do 52 books again this year. It's a good number for me. My reading projects are, look, not much is changing. Basically what I described last year is going to stay the same. But one thing that I am going to do is I'm going to try and put a, a teensy, teensy, tiny little bit more structure into it because I didn't quite have enough to really make significant headway like in Shakespeare, for example. And that's something that I am like hoping I'll do more of next year. So, you know, I am a mood reader. I am very fluid. I have to do this very intuitively loosey goosey, <laughs> you know, but I'm going to put a little bit more structure. So I do want to read like, it's very, because crispy is easy to read, it's very easy for me to just like pick up the next one and they're almost always available, Yeah, you know, and yeah. that sort of thing. So um, that's part of the reason why I read so many of those and not so many of other things. So I am going to do like, my goal is one Shakespeare play a month because it I can read a Shakespeare play in a day. That's not a big deal. And then one, one Christie a month and then one either... And every other month, I'm going to either do a novel off of my Russian list or off of one of my Asian literature lists, books in translation, and then we'll do a wild card. So that's going to be the basis of my TBR. That's four books. That's typically what I read in a month. Sometimes I read a few more, but like that's typically where I'm at um, so that I can always have a book that like I kind of just feel like reading. Yeah. You know? And even within that, I'm still using my inspiration lists. Neither one of those, none of those are supposed to be completionist. Right. My wild card could come off of my 1001 books. It could come off of a re book recommendation that I, my favorite book talker is Anne Patchett of Parnassus Books. Every Friday she does like, if this, if you haven't read this book, it's new, then it's new to you, something like that. And she has like the best like content. And I'm always like, bookmark that, bookmark, bookmark that. that, book, like I just bookmark her whole TikTok. Anyway, so that's like maybe something off of that. Anyway. So trying to give myself enough leeway to like feel and go with the intuition <laughs> and then like enough structure to actually be perhaps a little bit more accomplishing on some of my projects yeah. that are in, in, in midway. So we'll see. I may not, <laughs> I may not hold myself to that because that may, that may be too much structure for me. I mean, it, even when you have, like you're going good in those structures and everything's great. Sometimes like things just happen where you're just like, I cannot go back yeah. to my serious sad book right now. Right. I really just need to eat marshmallows and be okay for a while. Yeah. And that's when you have to just be like, you know what? Goals are great. 
but also my happiness is more important. Yeah, stay in a flow. This is still <laughs> my hobby that I do for free time for enjoyment, primarily. Like, this is not my job, so I don't want to turn it into a job. Right, exactly. And I think that's kind of the most important thing to remember when you set goals for yourself in reading is like, no matter what, you're just, you're here for yourself. Yeah. And it's okay to be like, you know what? In January, this sounded like a good idea. Yeah. But it is now 110 degrees outside. Yeah. And I haven't been able to go outside for a week because the air is unbreathable and I cannot do my goals this week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you're also doing a completely different tracking method than I'm doing yeah. this year. So I how's have, that going? I have done Notion in the past just to track all of what I'm reading. I did that in 2021 and 2022 and loved it. Love the Notion. I am using Notion for my inspiration lists and for my little bit of structure um, of like each month and like tick off something in this category. But for tracking sort of like all of the books that I read in a year, I'm going to be using Storygraph. I hate Goodreads. I was an early adopter like way back in 2006 and 2008. They have not updated that site. Of course, that happens when Amazon buys a site. I don't want to talk about the politics of that. <laughs> um, but, you know, it is a product of its time. It looks like Facebook from 2005. It really does. And it's like kind of a pill to use. And it has been for like 20 years. So um, Storygraph has all of the features that I want. It's a much more modern, modern app. It has none of the features that I don't want. I, I don't want my reading tracker app to be a social media app. I don't yeah. want to follow authors. I don't yeah. want to follow friends. I don't want to see what you highlighted. Get updates on I, uh, other people. I don't want to be in reading challenges with you. No. Also, interestingly, okay, so like I am the type of person that tends to read reviews before I try a new mm -hmm. book because I find, especially when you're reading like authors from this day and age, there are a lot of things that are in books that I don't want to read. Mm -hmm. And so I want to read the reviews and get trigger warnings and like, you yeah. know, make sure. I have found um, Audible reviewers and Amazon reviewers to be pretty solid, like, mm -hmm. you know, uh, representations of like, you know, what is going on in the book. Yeah, like, am I going to not or like this book or like it? Good read reviewers are like all over the place. Like yeah. they're just like the most. Some of the most chronic. It's like the Twitter of the book universe. They're like they have the chronically online personality. Yeah, comes through. I mean, I was reading or like like bombing an author's like reviews, reviews when you yeah. haven't read it. Like I think that's so unethical. The, yeah, then that really does happen on Goodreads. That's the kind yeah. of like a place for that. Yeah, I think my funniest one was like I was. Um, I read a Japanese short story from like, I think it was like from the 20s yeah. and I was kind of looking for, um, you know, some commentary on it. And I found this review on Goodreads was like, I guess this would be good if you were reading it in college. And I was just like, who leaves reviews like this? <laughs> yeah. Like, this is useless. I know. It's sort of, I follow this one person on TikTok who does like uh, reviews of recipes and the people will be like, I did this re this recipe for chicken, blah, blah, blah. And I didn't make it with chicken. It was horrible. <laughs> and it's like, that is the most fundamental uh, ingredient. Like, you're not making this dish. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> I will say, admit with the Amazon reviewers, you do have to wade through the people who are like, it came with a tear in the cover. One star. <laughs> like, sir. That's not... <laughs> what? Seriously? <laughs> so you do you do always have to wade through those, but it does feel a lot of times like the Goodreads people, like maybe one, aren't even reading the books, mm -hmm. but also their opinions aren't really... The reviews aren't really based on like enabling you to know if this is a book mm -hmm. you would want to read or not. Well, and like, and this is... I have a wonky perspective on book reviews, <laughs> which is that I don't fucking care what you think. Um, no, that's, there are a few people where it's like, oh, I found out that this book tuber or this book talker, we have similar tastes and I'm interested in their opinions. So I follow them and lots of other people, we have a really different taste and that's totally fine. And they can like what they like. And I'm right. not, like, I just, which means that like, I'm very selective about like who I, who I'm going to be like paying attention to what they like, right. because like, we're all different, but you know what? <laughs> like interface is super important. Yeah. So, you know. Both yeah. of us are going for uh, the, the method yeah. we're going for is about interface. 100%. And the other thing for me is like, again, story graph, it tracks everything that it, pretty much everything that I want, nothing that I don't. Um, it's very easy for me to mark something as read, to mark something as finished, to mark something as owned, give it a couple of stars and be done. It pulls in the moods and the genres. I tell it whether or not it was again, the format. So those are kind of my go-to metrics that I, yeah. I 
looking at. And then I, the other thing that I really like about Goodreads is it'll tell you like, oh, you're two books ahead or you're on track for your goal. So when I put in my 52 books, I kind of know where I'm at across the year in terms of that. I'm ahead. <laughs> and I like to stay ahead because I have anxiety and I sat at front of the classroom so that I could be a good student. <laughs> and I'm doing that with a, an app that doesn't know that I exist. So, you know what? It's it's between you and the app. It's yeah. okay. The app understands. <laughs> I feel like my anxiety has really come out in this episode. So we're, just, anyway. we're processing today. We're processing. We're processing. Yeah. yeah. So those are my tools of the trade for this year. I think that we are set up to succeed this year. Yeah. So, oh, and we have lots of fun comments. We've got some new listeners to the podcast, so we wanted to welcome you. I got uh, someone who said that they really like Dune uh, in oh, our, on YouTube, so they were like, yay, someone who likes Dune. They're I'm, all on your side. I, I'm always open to Dune fans. Welcome yeah. to our home. And we had someone who co was commenting about the historian as well. So, love oh. to have you guys. And um, anyway, whoa. So, what are your guys' goals for 2024? Yeah, we'd love to hear because that's always... I know sometimes there, there are people who bring up goals where I'm like, I never thought of that before. Yeah. That's a really good idea. Yeah. yeah. So, please, do share because... Well, I think we kind of covered it. <laughs> and the, then some. <laughs> the long and the short of the reading experience. Yeah. And I right. hope this really helps you guys get excited about reading for 2024 because it's a new year when this one... Well, when this posts. Right now, there's a Christmas tree over there. But when this posts... It yeah. will be a new year, um, and we're excited to yeah. start some reading. Yeah, and and also, okay, and I have to say, I'm excited not only for my reading goals and kind of thinking about what I'm going to do for next year, but I'm also, because I'm like an evangelist type person, and it's like, you know, I like to leave space for everybody to do their own thing, but when I evangelize something and somebody <laughs> picks up on it, then I'm just like... Core validation. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm I excited mean, for you. I mean... Do I feel the same way about you reading Agatha Christie? Yes. <laughs> there we go. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, everybody. Happy 2024. Happy New Year. And let us know yeah. how your reading is going to be what looking you, up yeah. this year. What are you reading this year? Bye-bye.